Hi, it's Lois, and today I'm going to show you how to paint a poncho. I'm an artist, writer, and songwriter. I started this YouTube channel because I wanted to share with you some of my art and ideas and show you a little bit about what's going on here in St. Charles. So here I am. I know I look like how I just fed my daughter's animals and drove home with windows down so uh, my hair is blown all over the place and I look crazy. But you're not here to see me. You're here to see this project that I'm working on. Um, it seems like if you've been following my vlog, I've been working on this dress for a long, long time. And I'm ready to let it go. The only problem is um, I've got one more thing to do. And so I've been looking at this dress. Now this dress, if, if you watch my previous entries in my vlog, you'll see, you'll see me actually paint the silk. You'll see me steam the silk, wash the silk, and hem the silk. So I'm at this point now where this, this product would be ready to go except for one thing, and that is that I don't quite like it yet. And the reason why I don't quite like it is because this is a kind of psychedelic dress uh, that was I've done for Halloween. And the idea is you've got this great, great, great autumn Halloween colors. And instead of, you know, just like a pumpkin or a spider or something, you know, traditionally Halloween, I decided to put this butterfly in the back. So you've got this butterfly on the back and it is, it's a purple imaginary butterfly. So I made it up. I don't think it exists in real life. Problem is, your eye is supposed to be drawn to this butterfly, but it's not really. The background is extremely psychedelic and the butterfly is just kind of black. So I am going to punch it up with some metallic paints. Normally I don't use metallic paints on silk garments. And the reason is because it tends to leak. It's, it's acrylic paints on silk garments just leaves a layer of plastic so you instead of steam fixing it the way you would normal silk dyes you actually heat fix it with an iron and so it leaves this plastic layer on the top and with unfortunately with metallic paints that's kind of what you're stuck with if you want metallic looking uh, fabric then you really need to use paints and there's kind of no way of getting around it. I don't know of anything that will allow you, that won't affect the drape of the silk without actually adding paints. And I've explained the differences between paints and dyes before, but what we've done to this garment so far is we've dyed it. And people ask me all the time, what's the difference between painting and dyeing? Well, when you dye, you have to steam fix. And the dye actually, to tell the difference between a dyed garment versus a painted garment, you can tell. The dye actually goes all the way through the garment. The entire fabric is dyed through, colored, chemically bonded with the silk. With a paint, the paint lays on the surface of the silk and it does affect the drape. So it kind of lays on the surface of the silk then uh, when you've waited 24 hours, you can set the bottom with a, a hot iron, but it will always be like this plastic layer on top of your silk. And so I'm, I'm going to try to punch it up with some metallic paints, but I'm gonna try to use them sparingly just to add enough kind of glitz to the butterfly without really affecting the drape of the butterfly. If we affect it a little bit, it's not that big of a deal because the intention is that you're going to spread your arms and this beautiful butterfly is going to emerge. So that's the, uh, that's the effect that I want to achieve. Now, whether or not I'm able to achieve it, I don't know, but we'll give it a shot. So the first thing I want to do is prepare this to be able to paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the freezer paper method. I find that that works really well when you're painting surfaces or adding uh, color later on after the garment has been steam fixed to keep the paint from bleeding all the way through and potentially ruining other parts of the silk. So that's what we're going to do first. 
we're going to put freezer paper underneath the butterfly itself in order to be able to paint it with metallic paints. Okay, so I learned this freezer paper method. I honestly don't know where, where I learned it. I think I might have learned it maybe on a YouTube video or talking to people on Facebook, uh, Silk Painters International. And I didn't know what it was for initially. But some silk painters and fabric painters like to use freezer paper to paint their silk. And the thing about freezer paper is you can get it anywhere. You can get it at Walmart. And this particular thing of freezer paper I've got is 18 inches long. And the nice thing about freezer paper is, let me pull it out and I'll show you. is it comes on a roll like this and then you pull it off. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on video, but see there's a shiny side. It's almost a, like a wax coating. And what you can do is iron that wax coating to the wrong side of the fabric and then paint on top of the fabric. And that way your paint will not bleed through the fabric. So it's great for, and, and it works with, with dyes too. So you can theoretically dye your garment if it's attached to a piece of freezer paper. And it will bleed through to other parts of the garment. It's a little problematic when you're working with a big, big section of fabric and if you don't have the space or the structure system in order to be able to do a big section of fabric like a big poncho or something like that you could consider using freezer paper instead of a structure system because the structure system will will take up a good bit of your resources to get started so i've got this all i'm interested in right now is covering over the back of the butterfly on the wrong side of the fabric, mind you, with freezer paper. And so I'm going to lay this down over the freezer paper and I'm probably going to have to do this butterfly half and half because my paper is only 18 inches wide. I'm going to lay this down. Any part I need to pay, paint I need to make sure that there's freezer paper underneath. So I'm going to, I laid down my section of freezer paper and now I've laid down my fabric on top of the waxy side of the freezer paper and now I'm going to iron on medium heat. So I've got this set on for. And I'm just going to take my iron and gently sort of just go over the fabric with the freezer paper underneath. And the idea is that the fabric sticks to the freezer paper. And will eventually give you a good surface over which to paint. So in this case, you don't have to stretch your silk onto a PVC stretcher system. You can just paint it on a table. Okay, so I've, I've done a little bit. I still have to do more but at least I can show you exactly what it looks like when it's attached to the silk. So it's just kind of lightly attached to the silk because you've ironed it to the silk. And so it's kind of protecting the back of it for when you actually paint your metallic paints on there. So I'm going to do this whole garment and then we'll come back and I'll show you the rest. Alright, so I have the freezer paper attached to or iron to the back of my fabric. I realized I made a mistake when I was doing this. I'm not going to tell you what it is at this point. 
And as a precaution, I kind of um, pinned it up underneath. Uh, because when you transport it from one room to the next, a big piece like this, you're, it's enough to for your freezer paper to pull away from your fabric. This is what, lo what it looks like on the underside of the fabric, and it's kind of just... I'm going to have to iron that one again. Um, it's kind of uh, just sort of haphazardly placed on here. But I just, you know, you just want to make sure that the underside of the fabric is protected so that you don't get paint on your table or whatever surface you happen to be uh, uh, painting on. So this is what it looks like underneath. And we'll transfer this to my dining room table so I can show you the painting process. Before I get started, I wanted to illustrate to you exactly what I mean by the difference in silk dyes and silk paints. Um, I have here a poncho that I made specifically for a Mardi Gras celebration here in Frenchtown on Fat Tuesday. And I made this special poncho, but I decided to bling it up a little bit because it, it was the Mardi Gras colors, but it needed some pizzazz. And so I added some metallic paints. And you can see the metallic paints on the front of like the mask here. I have some bronze accents and on the Mardi Gras wording you can see I have some gold accents. And if you look at the underside of the fabric you'll notice that the paint does not actually come through. All you see are the dyes. So when you're painting obviously you have a right side and a wrong side of the fabric and you don't want the wrong side of the fabric to be showing. It works great for ponchos. It doesn't really work great for scarves for that reason because your your scarf is always you know could can be upside down and wound around and so forth ponchos just lay with the right side and the wrong side but you can see how this paint um, it's kind of got this plastic feel and it does affect the uh, ultimate drape of the the garment so it's one consideration you have to make when you're talking about the decision to put paint on top of a silk dyed garment. It's, you know, it's up to you. It depends on what you want to achieve. In this case, I wanted a blingy poncho. It was just for one particular night and it looked great. In the case of this poncho, I just want to do the butterfly. I just want the butterfly to pop a little bit. And so I'm going to paint him. You never know, I, may, I might be sorry because <laughs> This is the first time I've done this design. It'll probably be the last, considering how long it took me. I'll show you my materials here. I've got my dining room table set up with my butterfly. And on the underside of my butter butterfly, I have the freezer paper. Just underneath the butterfly part, because I don't plan to do any of the rest of the poncho with paints. Okay, so we're talking about when I dye this garment... I used Jacquard Green Label dyes. Now, I like these particular paints that I've gotten, and I've tried a bunch of different stuff. This is Goudin Argent, and it is Sennelier. It is the, um, they're a French company that has a lot of silk dyes for the Surdy method. This is a really expensive bottle of silver resist. And with this water base resist, the metallic resists, or any other kind for that matter, I, I haven't found a really good water base resist. Even the Jacquard and all that other stuff comes out really like, yeah, big plastic lines. And they never really go away. I don't like their, I don't think that they're desirable because I, I just, they're too thick for wire, wearables anyway. If we were going to do wall hanging, maybe it wouldn't be so bad, but it's very textured. And so it's, it's, I don't know, it's just too thick. It goes on too thick and not only that, it's just really too expensive. So what I use are acrylic paints and they're called, i to get into focus, Lumiere light body metallic acrylic 
and they're made by Jacquard. You can use these paints on pretty much any kind of surface. I used them, I initially bought them at the beginning of this year because I was doing a whole bunch of Mardi Gras masks. So I was painting on not only paper mache, but also different kinds of fabric besides just silk. Some of them were polyester. And the Lumiere works really well. The nice thing about this is it comes in metallic colors. This one is violet gold. You know, you can use different kinds of paints. There's all kinds of different paints. This is the kind that works for me because it goes on per virtually any surface. So if I'm not using it on a silk project, I can use it on something else. The thing about this is you need to let it air dry for 24 hours and then you can heat, heat fix it with an iron. I'll show you the heat fixing process when we get done with this. Um, and so the colors that I have are violet gold. I have this pearlescent blue, violet, pearlescent white, metallic gold, metallic copper, and metallic bronze. So I'm trying to keep it bronze, bronzy, goldy kind of, and preserve some of the colors in the actual wings, the purples, uh, but I just want to like make it pop a little bit more. This I'm not going to use. It's too expensive. Um, these are the paints that I'm going to use. In addition to these paints, I also use like a, just a paper plate with a wax coated paper plate for my palette because I throw it away. I know it's ir uh, environmentally irresponsible, but we're already being environmentally irresponsible by killing all these silkworms to paint on silk. Uh, you need your brushes. A good acrylic brush works well, or a small, a fine tip, uh, like less than a number six round watercolor brush for these. Um, you need some clean water and you need lots and lots of paper towel. I tried so hard to film the time lapse on the painting process, but unfortunately I lost it. I'm not able to use it with my video software. So what I'm showing you right now is the finished painting of the butterfly. I used all the colors that I told you about. Um, and then I went back and I decided that it still needed to pop a little bit more. So I used a black fabric marker to outline and shadow a little bit so to make it pop a little bit more but this is what it looks like and we'll wait 24 hours before we actually iron it it doesn't take long for the paint to completely dry and once that happens you can unpin it from the freezer paper and pull the freezer paper off the back of the fabric This is the back of the butterfly as it is painted and dried with the freezer paper removed. And I'm trying to demonstrate a little bit about how the drape has been affected. It's a little bit, it's a little bit plastic, but for the most part, I think because I used the paint so sparingly, it's, it's going to be okay. And quite frankly, I think it's going to actually be great. So we'll see how it looks tomorrow. Here we are. It's been 24 hours and I am about to heat set my poncho. So what I have here is the Lumiere paints that I used to paint the fabric. In whatever paint you use, you need to make sure that you read the instructions on the back of the paint in order to be able to know how to properly cure and heat set the product that you're buying. So the, the instructions say to let the paint cure for 24 hours, which we've done, and then it also says that you need to 
heat set it by ironing both sides of the fabric at least 30 seconds at the highest temperature suited for the fabric. And as I told you before, you don't want to push your iron any more than a medium heat setting because you'll burn your silk. So the highest we're going to set our iron is medium. I'd hate for you to see see this project this through this far with as much work as we have into it and then end up burning your silk. It's frustrating. Believe me, I've actually done it. So I know exactly <laughs> how frustrating it is. Okay, so I've got my... my uh, my iron has been warming up and it says to do both sides which I've never done I've always done the underside but since I read the instructions I need to follow the instructions so I'm going to start with the front of the poncho and, and just basically iron it according to the instructions And it looks like, um, and you need to make sure that you move your iron so that you're not burning the silk. But also, you need to pay attention to what's happening to the paint. If the paint's actually setting, it'll feel a little bit flatter. If you're heating it too hot, you're going to get bubbles. You'll actually hear like a popping noise of like melting plastic. That's a bad sign. Take your iron off right away. Don't do that. So I'm going to do the rest of this. I'm going to do the front and back, and then I'll show you the finished product. So here is the dress I'm modeling. I can clean myself up this time. I think it came out really nice. And I think adding the paint helps to bring the butterfly to the foreground. And the way I painted him, sort of makes him look a little bit more energized than he was before he kind of looks sort of sleepy. So, this is wonderful. Woo. I can't wait until Halloween. Until next time, this is Lois signing off.